Hi, my name is Eddie Jackson Jr. and this is Real True Street Crimes. I want to talk a little more about a whale times 10. Eddie Jackson, the fat man, you understand? Mr. President, you understand? All the niggas in the street used to call him that. Big Bear Cola, magic fat man, you understand? But he liked fat man most. He preferred you call him the fat man, you understand? And in the fat man tradition, let me tell y'all this. My father, Lord Corn, was his tax man, okay? My father used to have Lord Corn change his money from street money to money that they could travel with that was in a lighter pack. Like, if he had a million dollars, he needed to get broke down. He'd have it broke down to $1,000 bills, $500 bills, and $10,000 bills. Understand this. Mr. Corn, Lord Corn, his tax man, would have to go to the bank and do all of this. It might take him a week to get a million dollars broke down like that into big bills because he got to go to the bank and sign them out and all this shit, okay? So, my father always kept a money clip like this and he kept a hundred thousand dollars worth of thousand dollar bills. Lord Cohen will attest to this, you understand. So my father used to walk around with a hundred thousand dollars in thousand dollar bills in a money clip. Remember, he's 300 pounds at this point. Now me and him go to a restaurant to eat, okay? We ate like a motherfucker. We had a me as this father and son date, me and my dad. I was a little boy. We riding, eating, doing everything. So we was riding. We started off the morning riding and shit. And we rolled down Jefferson going to Belle Isle. So let's go around to Belle Isle. And we rolled past Coffee Cadillac. And I saw this, this beautiful El Dorado that was like a red burgundy. And I was just ooing and owing all over there. Like, wow, Dad, did you see? Look at that, Daddy. Look at he said, what? He turned around. He went in the coffee Cadillac and he bought that Cadillac and me and him. They let the front window down in coffee Cadillac and let my father pull me and my dad pull that Cadillac off the flow of coffee Cadillac that was located on Jefferson at that time, we pulled straight, they broke the glass down, and we pulled straight out of the showroom flow in this car. Now, we riding together, okay? Now, we didn't got the new Cadillac, brand new Cadillac. Now, we finna go eat. That's how we was on our way to eat, but I saw the car, and I was going out over, so my dad bought it. We riding in it to go eat. We ride it, we go eat, we do everything. We eating, so now we go eat. I mean, I ate, and I was a little greedy fat kid. I showed you that picture of me on the steps of Leavenworth. So I had ate like two hamburgers and all the fries, and I had a shake. And I was a little fatty, you understand? Hard, husky hearty is what they used to call me. So I had ate like this. Now, we at the restaurant. My father is finna pay for the food, and the waitress bring the bill to the table. My father goes in his pocket. He pulls out that money clip with all $1,000 bills on it. He gives the waitress a $1,000 bills, and he says to her, keep the change, that ain't no hundred. God damn it. She went up there to get a bill to the owner. The owner of this restaurant was there. When she gave it to him, and she told, and the owner told the waitress that the bill was real, Man, she came back there and lost her goddamn mind on my daddy. You'd have thought that was his wife after that. Hell, he could have took her out the restaurant with him at that point. Shit. Man, that lady came back there kissing all on my daddy and everything. I'm not lying to you. This is a true story. We had breakfast and he tipped her. And you know back then the breakfast couldn't probably was $20. He gave her a $1,000 bill. I swear to God, crossed my heart and hoped to die. That's how the fat man used to blow a motherfucker's mind. He'll pull out a $10,000 bill on your ass if he feeling in the mood and he get fired up. EJ wasn't no motherfucking joke. 
He was truly one of a motherfucking kind. And when they broke the motherfucking, when they made the mold, they broke that motherfucker. I'm telling you. Wasn't but one of them motherfuckers there. I ain't seen nothing like him since he been gone or after. I ain't seen nothing like that big fat motherfucker. He was truly a one of a kind motherfucker. And every story, as I pitch him out there and tell you about how the fat man used to walk into Mr. Kelly's and say drinks on me for the entire motherfucking place that entire night. And Mr. Kelly would tell you if he was still around. UBQs was a very close friend of my dad. He used to walk into UBQs and do the same thing. I told y'all, he kept a phone in the Cadillac in that day, which was not usual. That was odd. He would call the motherfucking UBQ up because he had his number in the office in UBQ and tell him the fat man to be there in 30 minutes, goddamn. UBQ will have everybody out there waiting on the fat man because they know when he walk in, it's a party on for everybody in UBQs. And I done heard so many people. This guy used to do a lady's hair that I know now, close to one of my family members. She said, the guy said, your daddy, he used to do your dad's hair, and after that, they have a party in the barber shop, nothing but cocaine sniffing. He said, bitch, he said, you would think it was a goddamn club when EJ was in there getting his finger waves, because you know it take hours to get your shit finger waved. They said, man, the fact, and they said, also another motherfucker told me it was a place named Shaw down there on the boulevard where everybody used to go and get their finger waves done. They said when the fat man used to go in the shards, god damn it, you would have thought it was a holiday when EJ walking that motherfucker. Because everybody jumping, you understand? Everybody had motherfucking attention. Like the general in that motherfucker is how it used to be. When the fat man walking that motherfucker anywhere, he used to walk in. And if he didn't jump to attention, I promise you, you going to jump to attention in a couple motherfucking minutes. If I got to walk out to that motherfucking trunk, and pull out, as I told you, the fat man used to travel with a suitcase full of money. So if I got to go out there and bring that motherfucking suitcase in here, and the fat man would always do that when he get in his motherfucking mood and riled up off that goddamn cocaine, he finna put a goddamn show on you for real, and he ain't bullshitting. And by the time at the end of that goddamn show, Everybody who's seen it will never forget to tell you, man, that motherfucker ain't tell you that. That motherfucker there, I don't give a fuck where he go, he gonna close the motherfucking place down. If we go to motherfucking Shrine of Black Madonna, Milton Henry is making motherfucking show, he meets Malcolm X. And I ain't nothing but a baby when Malcolm get killed. I'm talking about I'm a baby. I ain't, I'm a milk age riding with the fat man where he got me as the baby in the back seat. Going to give Milton, he tell me some motherfucking shrine money at the shrine of Black Madonna and Brother Red down there. That's what he used to call him, Brother Matt Red. He didn't call him Malcolm X. He called him Brother Red. You understand? That was his Brother Red. And he knew Brother Red well because he always took Brother Red some money down there to the shrine of Black Madonna because Milton Henry would always be making show. The fat man bought some money down to the shrine of Black Madonna because the Black Panthers go. And when he see who there, you ain't got to worry. The suitcase is on his way. You're going to have the whole suitcase. He used to fuck him up. When he go down there and he'll say this, I swear to God, this is a true story and I'm not lying to you. He'll say, Milton, go in my trunk and get that suitcase out and take that suitcase in there. I already know this is a fucking suitcase full of money. Milton Henry is taking out the trunk of the goddamn car, taking it to the Shrine of Black Banana for the brothers. You understand? So when I would say we was really for the black movement, that's not no joke. We were really for the black movement. So I want to say peace. I'm going to keep the stories coming. If you need some, to lose some weight, check out this cold shake ice of tea. Put it in some cold water, shake it up. You got to exercise with it to get your best results. Trust what I'm telling you. You will get your best results if you exercise with it. And as I always say, if you would like to give me a play, and I thank you if you do, and if you don't, I thank you. Go to my link, Health and Wellness. Go to Shop. Go to Categories. Go to Health and Wellness. That's where you'll find my Alleviate Cream at. 
is that health and wellness. You'll find my harmony drops, which I love to drop two under my tongue, let it sit for 60 seconds, and swallow. And as I always say to y'all, go to my Facebook page, and you can see my before and after pictures of what I look like before and after. So you'll see, I ain't just sitting here lying to you, telling you about Isa T and I don't use it, or my Alleviate Cream, which I put on my knees all the time. So I really use the product. And I also want to say to you, our challenge is five for five. In five days, you'll lose five pounds. It's a total life change. And as I always say to y'all, life is good. Life is great. Life is good. I'm out. Subscribe. Pass this on to somebody else if you can. I'm out.